Hey guys out there in the YouTube world, so I got a new gun in here and I finally had a little bit of time to get out and test it and I thought that I would do a quick ammo comparison just like I've done before with my Ruger Precision Rifle uh, but this time what I got is a new CZ457 and this is the Varmint model. <clears throat> now I'm going to talk a little bit about specs for this thing before I really get into the ammo comparison uh, just because there's not really a whole ton of stuff out there yet because these are so new so I just figured I'd go through them real quick um, first thing like I said this is the Varmint model now we spoke with CZ directly and they have several models of these well the only one that's different is the MTR which has a true match chamber all the others have the same barrel chamber bottom metal so on so like I said this is the Varmint model. Uh, the stock, uh, I'm not a huge fan of how it looks. The slope has a pretty severe angle there at the end. That's why I put that bag on there. It just wasn't super, super comfortable to shoot. But it's really good quality. I mean, the wood is solid. Um, I'm not going to take the barrel out, but it does have two uh, aluminum bedding blocks that it screws into, which is nice. And it is a true free floating stock. So it's it's performance wise, it's okay. Uh, looks wise, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of it. I'm going to get a chassis for it eventually when they come out. But that's down the road sometime. Um, for a scope base, I got the Area 4, 419 uh, 30 MOA base. And these are cool because they have a level built in. It takes me a little while to get used to it because I'm so used to the level being on top of the scope. So I find myself looking up more often than not. But like I said, I'm just getting used to it. Um, also put the Area 419 bolt handle on. Now I don't have the factory one with me, but it is a huge improvement over factory. They're just they're small and this one's really easy to grip and you don't really have to search for it. Um, as far as glass goes, I got the Diamondback Tactical 4 through 16 by 44. Uh, I love this scope. It's great. Always holds zero. Dialed up and down. Always returns to zero. Uh, next, we can talk a little bit about this trigger that's in here. Uh, this is the first CZ rifle I've ever owned. Um, I will say my initial impressions were. It's solid, really nice build quality, fit and finish is really nice. Uh, for this 457s, um, one of the things they changed among others was the trigger. I don't believe the 455 had an adjustable trigger, but I could be wrong. But this one has three adjustments. You can adjust it for length of pull, over travel, and weight. Now, I've got this one adjusted all the way down, and I think it's around a pound. Um, I haven't really messed with over travel too awful much or length of pull, but <clears throat> I'll do that eventually. Um, but yeah, uh, one thing I want to show you that's really cool about these, and if you'll notice the rifle is unsafe, uh, I want to show you how the round enters the chamber. Now, uh, there's a company out there called Voodoo Gunworks. They make like $4,000 22s. I mean, they're, they're just crazy. But something very unique, and, I, and I, this is YouTube taboo. Uh, this is a live round. I don't have any dummy rounds, but like I said, the safety is on, and it won't be chambering it all the way. Anyway, so I'm going to see if I can't get this on camera for you guys, the way that the round enters the chamber. The round itself never touches a feed ramp, never touches the magazine. It goes straight from the magazine into the chamber. Now, I'll see if I can get this on video. It's kind of hard to see. But the way it pops up when it gets cycled, see it pop up there? Never touches a feed ramp, never touches the magazine at all. Just goes straight into the chamber. Now, that's really cool because I know a lot of you guys out there notice, especially with my Ruger Precision Rimfire, when... It feeds from the magazine into the barrel. It can get pretty scraped up. Well, that's just something they eliminated here. It just helps with accuracy. I mean, I'm sure it's not a huge increase, but every little bit helps when we're talking about 22. Okay, so enough about that. Um, I like it. So I only had four types of ammo to compare on this one. Like I said, I'll keep it short and sweet. Um, the four types I had was CCI standard velocity, SK standard, Ely Force, and Federal White Box. And those are nice because they're pretty popular. Um, you can get them pretty much anywhere except the Force. Force is kind of expensive. SK is not too bad. Um, but anyway, so I'll go over kind of like I did before, compare. And one thing I do have to go over is I did it a little bit different this time than I did in my other comparison. I ran the Boar Snake through the barrel five times, gave... 25 rounds for fouling, and then I started to shoot for groups. So I think this is a little bit more of a true indication on how these rounds shoot. So the first one I'm going to show you here is CCI standard velocity. So as you can see here on these targets, on the left is fouling. On the right is when I actually shot for group. Now, all these groups were shot at 50 yards, and these MOA numbers are true 
to 22 at 50. In my other videos, I just punched in whatever the Ballistics X app said, and it was whatever. Well, you have to multiply that with two because it's 22 and it's at 50 yards. So all these are true to the size of this groups. So here's CCI standard. I didn't have a chronograph, so I didn't know exactly how fast they were going. Um, average group size is 1.74. That's pretty awful, considering how well these CZs are supposed to shoot. Uh, all the range from 238, I mean, that's a flyer there, down to 88. I mean, even then at 0.88, it should, should be shooting these much more than that. My Ruger Precision Rimfire shoots CCI standard velocity really well. So this was the first one. Average group size, 1.74. And that's just CCI standard velocity. It's my personal favorite. Next, I went with Ely Force. As you can see, the group size was a little bit better. Still not stellar. Same story. Fouling on the left. Shoot for groups on the right. Average 1.37. Uh, these are 42 grain bullets. Uh, and again, these are all at 50 yards. I'm sure they'll do a little bit better at 100 and further, but this is what I had today. Um, I will say that it was a little bit windy, so that did come into a factor, but not as much as these numbers are reflecting. Um, yeah, also not, not good. I mean, only one under a minute. Um, pretty, pretty crappy, in my opinion. Fallon group was okay, but you know, this stuff's expensive. Shoots way better than my Ruger Precision Rimfire. Probably won't be shooting it out of this again. All right, next, SK Standard. And as you can see, these are a little bit better. Oh, there's Roscoe too. Hey, buddy. Um, getting close to a minute average but still you know this gun i can't remember what i paid for it it was around 450 bucks you'd expect it to shoot what much better than that um two under a minute but still i mean once 1 1.6 1 1.5 that's it's not very good and i can say that i was pretty much about as stable as i could get so i pretty much eliminated myself as much as i could today uh just not not shooting like i'd expect um uh, the last one i tried was the federal white box stuff you could buy at Walmart, even though I won't buy ammo at Walmart anymore. Average 1.44. And just a couple things here. This one for sure was the wind. I felt the wind gust up. But I mean, look, it's, I mean, these are awful numbers. Um, overall, I have been a little bit disappointed in this as far as accuracy goes. My Ruger Precision Rimfire, I know I keep talking about it, but most ammo that I put through that shot pretty good, decent, much better than your average run-of-the-mill stuff that you can put through this rifle. Um, and again, like I said, Ruger Precision Rimfire, here it is there, Ruger Precision Rimfire. I think you can get them brand new for like 380 and this is like 450 bucks. So I'm definitely uh, looking forward to trying some more ammo through it. Um, I'm sure it's going to shoot the Center X and all that pretty well, at least I hope it will. Uh, if not, I'm not even really sure if I want to keep it. Um, one cool thing I did find out, speaking of voodoo, is a uh, message on Instagram because I saw a post. Lapua will apparently, if you ship in your rifle for 50 bucks, they'll test it for whatever MOA rating that you want it to be. So say if you want to find want them to find an ammo that's half minute, they'll do that. And at 50 bucks, so I think I'm going to save myself a little bit of headache and a little bit of money instead of doing this. I'll probably just ship it in, pay the 50 bucks, and have them do it. But anyway, so overall impressions, very solid. As far as build quality goes, accuracy so far, in my opinion, is a little bit lacking. But, you know, it's fun. You get to go out and shoot, and it's hard to have a bad day when you're out on the range. So anyway, uh, you know, drop a comment if you have any questions. If not, uh, thanks for watching, guys.